Well, welcome to the technical room. Colin is our engineer. He's going to sit here and he is going to tell us a little bit about the shock options that we have on the Mojo HD. The Mojo HD was designed around an air shock, specifically this air shock, the Fox RP23. This is our standard spec because it's a really good shock and it's what we've done most of our testing around. So we worked very closely with Fox and Dave Weagle, sending them out early HDs and having them ride this shock and various tunes on it. Uh, we settled on the 170, or no, the 200 PSI boost valve tune, and we're actually really surprised at how much just changing the boost valve is able to improve the ride quality. Um, this is great shock, but where it starts finding its limits is park riding, going to North Star, or just really long, rough downhills. So for that, we offer the DHX Air. This is a little more tunable. It's got the uh, bottom out bumper, so that end of stroke travel, a um, little more control there. This is a good, you know, heavy duty trail shock if you're concerned about weight. We've also just revised our stance on coil shocks, basically because of this shock, the uh, DHX RC4. Because of that bottom out control knob, this can control the shock rate at the end of the stroke enough to allow this to work really well in the HD. So this is tunable enough that I've ridden this shock on an HD and thought it was great. And I was actually really surprised at how well the bike pedaled without any pro pedal at all. Fully open, the thing still rides great. So if you're not too concerned about weight, this is a really good option. One of the things I talked about earlier was the idea that there's no model years here at Ibis. We always make the best possible product we can and don't worry about introducing something new at the trade show. We just always give you guys the best we possibly can. I want to show you an example of that here. We, we have the original, this is the original upper link found on the Mojo. And after we hired Brian Lopes to ride for us, he uh, decided that he wanted a little more torsional rigidity in the rear end. So what we did is we came up with the Lopes link and it's an update over this single independent links that we used to have. Uh, the Lopes link was a really great improvement on the ride of the, of the Mojo and the Mojo SL. And uh, what we learned there was all has also kind of been ported into the HD. You can see the super beefy upper link that we have here, upper Lopes link of the, uh, the Mojo HD. And Colin's going to go through with you sort of the latest that we have on the lower links. There's been a constant evolution on the lower links all along, and he's got the latest greatest here to talk to you about. Okay, so this one is the original lower link that came on the Mojo. At this time, we were just trying to make it as light as possible. And it's been a really good part, reliable, uh, worked well. But after doing the HD development, we started going back and working in some of those changes back into this link. So if you compare the HD link to the original link, you can see these wide flanges here and a little more meat through the middle and this is a much stiffer part. So we've gone back, and this is the, the first iteration that we did. It got those wide flanges and a little more meat on the outside. This, this change resulted in a, tor or a lateral stiffness increase of 7.5% at the axle. And so we we're pretty happy with that, but we're gonna keep going. So this is the latest link. It's got all the same things as the last link, but it's a little stiffer through the middle there. Um, we think that's going to help out in torsional stiffness, but I only got this last week and I haven't gotten it tested yet, so I don't know what, what the numbers are. So uh, we'll let you know soon. Okay, we got a little secret treat for you. I'm going to go look at Roxy at work here. This year on the Mojo and the Mojo SL, we're making a fairly significant change. We're merging those two models into just one model. We're just going to call it the Mojo SL. Uh, it's come down a little bit in price. It's down to $21.50 retail for the, for the Mojo SL frame. And what we're doing is we're bringing the two most popular colors from the Mojo, which are, is the Nuclear Pesto and the Eddie Orange. Those will be incorporated into the already existing colors of the Mojo SL, which is white and the trans blue and also the matte clear. One of the great things about being really close to Fox is that we work closely with them on a bunch of projects 
like for example, this cool Talus that we've got. If you order a Talus upgrade on the Mojo SL, you get a 130, 150 travel Talus rather than the 120, 150 like comes stock on theirs. And the great thing about that is that the Mojo is a super versatile bike. You can use it in a 130 mode as a really great, fun cross country bike, but then pop it up to 150 for doing more of a downhill, uh, all mountain sort of riding. It's a really great thing that we offer and really showcases the versatility that the Mojo has. One of the things we're doing this year is we're offering edge components on the bike. So you can get edge wheels, edge bar, and edge stem on the bikes. Uh, now the Hakalugi frames are coming with the edge forks. So that's a, that's a nice upgrade that we're seeing. We have now formula brakes top to bottom, every single model in all of our mountain bikes. That was a brief look at some of the changes that we've got for 2011. But if you want to have a really close look, just go to the website. We'll have everything posted there and it'll go in detail, nitty gritty. You can get down and dirty and look at all the little parts numbers and things like that and find out exactly what we're doing for next year. So go to ibiscycles.com, check it out.